You know, I remember a day when I picked up my first Dungeons & Dragons book and we sat around a table and we played the game. And at that time, it was quite affordable. You could sit there, pick up one book, all of you could share. Uh, if you had the series of books, it made it better. Over time, you would spend a little bit of money and buy them, but mainly you just had to get a, a pack of dice and away you go. Well, now it seems Dungeons & Dragons is no longer the affordable manner that it once was, with the costs pretty much doubling from 3rd edition to their new edition coming out, and it just gets worse from there. I actually have a 3rd edition book, 3.5 edition book, and the Canadian price on this is $39.95. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, but they print them on the back of the covers. So, for $40 Canadian, uh, and in a lot of ways, in places, you could buy these used quite easily for a lot less than that. That was what the starting point was. Of course, I didn't start with this. I started in second edition, a little bit into first edition, going into it. But now, the new version is a lot more costly. So the 2024 digital and physical core rule books are going to be on a discount of $179.97. Save $60 on the core rule books valued at $240. So each book is now double the cost of this $80 a book, $80 a book for something that was $40 originally. And of course, what do you get in these new books? Well, that was $40 Canadian. This is 240 American dollars. So add in another 60 to $100 on top of that for us Canadians up here. And now you're in a realm that you're completely priced out of this game. They think a lot of uh, whales play Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. No, the whales play more Magic the Gathering out of it because cards can retain some value and be traded like stocks. That's why that exists. But now, what are you really getting out of this? The new books look absolutely horrific with the artwork. This one in particular, I really, I still question how the stance of this dragon is in the background. Let's not count that everybody is missing on this, this cover. It's all mostly female now on the cover, which is kind of interesting in itself because the competitive nature of this game doesn't necessarily ring true to that but it just gets worse especially when you have dwarves now getting each other's tattoos on their bodies i i this makes me wonder if ai art was involved in this or is this some sort of meme that we are completely missing um so the dwarf beard with the rings in the beard gets tattooed on the other guy and his beard gets tattooed on that guy Dwarves like their beards, but they never like them this much. Usually you would have like skull and crossbones. You would have something menacing for a tattoo when it came to dwarves. At least that's the type of idea that I get when I, I think of Dungeons and Dragons and a fantasy realm. Not whatever this is. I don't even know who this is being made for. And you know what? We can't forget our good friends that are in the wheelchair, that are completely disabled because they have to be part of the game. They have to run around in game and showcase their disability in the game. I have a disability and it's the least thing that I would ever want to have in, involved in my Dungeons and Dragons game. That would be absolutely horrific if I had to deal with what I deal with on a regular basis in a Dungeons and Dragons game. I actually did a video when this first came out of the idea of the combat wheelchair, how asinine and ridiculous of an idea this actually is. And this video is three years, three years old now, uh, back when the channel was very small, and it really was something else. The whole concept of having a combat wheelchair going up a set of stairs to fight the menacing red dragon at the end just that concept you know the the lich he he has a mausoleum and to ward off invaders he puts in stairs this is not a concept 
that fantasy is about. Yes, it's all about being inclusive and diverse, which it is. Everyone that plays these games. But if you tell me that you want to sit there and play a game in a wheelchair in game, that's a different story altogether. I know at one point I am watching Full Metal Alchemist. I was like, okay, how can I make this character actually work in Dungeons and Dragons? He's missing an arm. He's missing a leg. They are part of a mechanical system. And that is much different than being in a wheelchair where there is healing things that you can do in games. The idea that people don't heal normally, I guess if that's the type of type of situation and type of game that you're going to play, you can easily put a psionicist in a combat wheelchair and then they become more effective. But that's more of what we see with the X-Men and Xavier. In a fantasy realm where healing and miracles exist, this idea, unless they are a shopkeep and a stationary person that's not going out adventuring, they're retired from adventuring. People retire from adventuring very young in Dungeons and Dragons just because reality sets in. Not that we need another take on this topic, but what would Twitter be without another useless opinion? So here is mine. Not everything is made for you. Don't like it? Totally fine. Don't incorporate it in your world. The end. It really is that easy. And that is where we come full circle on this situation. Now we have a price point that is completely pricing people out of the game. And we have people shilling for the game saying it's not made for you. This game was never made for you. No, this game was made for everybody. That's the problem and now it's being subject to people coming down on it and saying you have to change these you have to control these you have to gatekeep these things and it is only made for the select few that now can afford it and you've got to put your identity or your skin color or your disability first in a game not that the people around the table doesn't matter and that you go into a fantasy realm. No, it has to be imagined everything, every woe, every little detail of our lives needs to be put into a fantasy realm. And that mental breakdown that is on the cusp at that point needs to be uh, segregated into Dungeons and Dragons. This is why this game is absolutely nowhere near what it used to be. And this is why it's not made for everyone anymore. It's made for the select few that want to sit there and scream at the rooftops and say, you're not including me, even though you were welcome at the table. So all these new elements that they're adding into the game, these changes that they're making with Dungeons and Dragons and lore and how drow are no longer really a thing in Dungeons and Dragons because they were too stereotypical of things how orcs are no longer part of a beastly organization of human-like beings in Dungeons & Dragons. Everything has its own detail at this point, but it all has to be segregated back to a reality instead of it being completely fantastical and good storytelling. The storytelling has left the room. Uh, it's no longer about the story, and it's about who sits at the table instead of you're all welcome at the table to play these games any way you see fit and actually do something that's fantastical and learn some more skills about acting and dramatization of things that generally wouldn't happen in the first place. It is fun to play things that are not like you. You don't always have to play yourself in a game. If you play something that's different, then it, it, you get a new repertoire of that out of it and you learn something new. You've learned some new skills at the same time. But now, if you can't see past that, if you can't see past yourself at the table, uh, you're not going to have a fun time. You're going to have something that completely drains you down and then you get too attached and too emotioned into these games. And then where do you go? When you lose the character, it becomes something that really does hurt. That attachment I have seen time and again. And you know what? It, some days it just, life isn't fair. And that's what Dungeons and Dragons about. It's some, a lot of it is about the, the, the glory that you get from it. 
but some of it is about the loss that you get from it too and learning how to navigate these things in Dungeons and Dragons it's never going to be what they push in and around the new books anyway I'm your prog Canadian Phoenix Center Shadow I'm signing off here don't forget to like and subscribe I will see you again very soon